Hello, my name is Kent Philpott. Um, I'm pastor of Miller Avenue Baptist Church in Mill Valley, California. And this is the last video on the idea of what is church. And I said that I was going to talk about what is a church? What, how do you recognize a church? Uh, you can be called a church. That doesn't mean you are a church. And there is a way that at least, well, I have, I'm sure it's shared by many others, about how it is that you know if, it, if it's a church or not. You can get together in a building with a, a cross on the top and stained glass windows and pews and Bibles and hymnals and so on, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a church meeting what I would say biblical criteria. That's our interest anyway. The whole concept of, of church comes out of the scripture. In the Old Testament, you had the called of God, the chosen people, the, the Jewish people. And they were gathered to uh, believe in God and to honor him and to worship him. And that was a church. Uh, that was an assembly. Church means assembly or gathering. A group of people to coming together for, for the purpose of honoring and worshiping God. And then we find in the New Testament... Uh, a word is um, uh, used, uh, ecclesia, uh, means the called out ones, join together. Uh, they become a group of people who believe in Jesus and worship the Lord and their church. Now, how would you identify a church today? Now, I know I'm going to upset a few people, and it's going to be a little controversial, but after four decades of being a pastor, this is what I think. My viewpoint. I'm not saying this is it. This is the way I look at it at any rate. I think there are two things that you can use to identify a church. Now, I, all of a sudden, I just remembered, uh, I had my Bible sitting over here open to a passage of Scripture in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, which is a description of what the early church did. Acts 2, 42 says, And they devoted themselves uh, to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Those four things that the early church did. Starts off with the apostles' teaching, fellowship. That means being together, having things in common. Breaking of bread and prayers. So, these are the elements that the early church engaged in. Now, we also know that Jesus sent them out to be witnesses. Every Christian is to be a witness or an evangelist. That's one of the ways that you know that a church is a church. Jesus was very clear in the Great Commission's the statements of what he wanted his followers to do. Really straightforward and clear about it. So we have quite a bit of information about what an actual church looks like. What an actual church does. Now, the activities of a church may vary. They may do things differently. I mean, they may look radically different from one another. But there are primarily two things, in my point of view, uh, that would mark what a genuine church is. First of all, they are proclaimers of the message of the person and the work of Jesus. They are engaged in, a, in the public presentation of what we call the gospel. The gospel means good news. Now, the good news is that we may be saved from our sin. We may be rescued. It's like there's this massive current heading toward oblivion, toward eternity, uh, which an eternity without having experienced the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ means an eternity separated from God, then unless that person is rescued, they are headed automatically 
into an eternity apart from God, which the Bible uses the term hell. Now, you say, well, you really believe in hell? Yes, I do. Um, I actually do. And I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to say so, because it is a biblical doctrine, and it is a truth. And uh, you, you don't want to play fast and loose with that doctrine just because you don't like it. Um, but the message of good news is the being rescued, and we are rescued because of the work of Jesus. And it's because of who he is, because Jesus, the sinless Lamb of God, the Son of God, God himself, uh, the Word made flesh that was with God in the beginning, he became flesh and took on flesh, just like we are. He died in our place. He died a literal death like we would die, and we all will die. And he took upon himself at the cross our sin. Because of who he is, God in the flesh, the perfect sacrifice for sin, and then what he did, taking our sin away. His death on the cross, his being buried, and then he was risen from the dead, he was raised from the dead. Who Jesus is and what he did. He rescues us from sin. We call Jesus Savior. We use the word saved. There are terms that sound sort of funny on the ears of many people, but not for those of us who know Jesus as Savior. We love those words, and they mean a lot to us. So the real church proclaims the message of Jesus. It will be evangelical. It may do other things. It may help the poor, minister to people who need it in all kinds of ways meeting the physical needs of people, but beyond, over and above that, that overshadows everything, and everything else is merely attendant to, is the proclamation of the message of Jesus. And then secondly is the teaching, the teaching of believers. Sometimes we use the term discipleship, but it's a teaching of the scripture, a real focus on the Bible, not a bunch of other stuff. Other books might be used and so on, and literature and commentaries and various uh, uh, aids to biblical theology and doctrine and understanding scripture. But the folk, there will be a strong focus on a teaching of the believer. It's the feeding. I'm a pastor. My job is to feed uh, Christians because we're growing up into the fullness of Christ and we grow up through coming to grips with the scripture. Uh, the one thing that I have loved all of my Christian life is the Bible. Uh, before, I couldn't understand it. I once threw a Bible across the room because I hated it. Once I became a Christian, I loved it. And uh, for all of these years, I have paid attention to it with great detail. And any rate, this is how you mark a church. Proclaim the message of Jesus and teach the scripture. This is how you identify a church. If it does not do these things, should not call itself a church. Something else, but not a church. All right. The end of the message on the church. So long.